This is a natural outcome of your being aware of yourself as consciousness more than as person. From person to presence. The evolution of consciousness is from person to presence. When you are relating to the world from the position of a person, you will have many conflicts and different points of view. Too much contrast, too many different opinions, and they will trouble you. Even the mind, even if you even when you are by yourself, your mind is troubling you. When you have come to recognize yourself as presence, still in the same body, but now as presence, the mind, the psychological side of the mind, loses its influence. It loses its authority and power. Then when you see him coming, already he sees that he stands no chance. Your mind should not be your boss. It should not be your master. It makes a terrible master. It becomes a devil. Use your mind for practical functioning. It is beautiful. Use your mind for creativity, creative expression. It is beautiful. But don't go to the mind to search for who you are. Yeah, I need to confess that my mind tries to claim this boss ship. So the, the, the mind tries to do what? It, it tries to claim that the, the strongest fear that comes always, OK, I do not, will not get from life what I need to be fulfilled. And I'm aware of that. And I'm watching this fear. And then I feel my heart comes like an emptiness. But I also fear, OK, that's also not who I am. So how do I really break free of all of that? The clue, the clue to your answer you have already given, but you're not aware of it. You want something. You want something from the mind that you also want to get away from. <laughs> you want something from your mind, but you don't want him to have any influence on you. <clears throat> the strongest way that the mind can have a hold on you is you want something from him. Okay? The mind says, you want to marry my daughter? Sure, marry my daughter. Okay? And I'm going to be with you for life. <laughs> I'm going to be your father-in-law, man. Okay? You want what from mind? It does not give you something for nothing. You want something, and that's why that's the foothold the mind has in you. I'm not talking about regular desire. You can have a desire for things in life. Life itself is a kind of desire. You see? But when it is a desire for something you feel you need to be more of who you are, you're in the jaws of the dragon itself. You can have anything in life. Everything you see is innocence. But in your mind, you have created a relationship with that and made it into something it is not. So it's not the thing you are suffering from, but attachment to it. You have given too great a meaning for that. You have a feeling, I want to have this. I want some things from life. I want some things from life. Hmm? But then the mind comes and the mind does something to me. Yes, because you want something from him. You may say, I just want it from life. But maybe you want this thing too much. And you feel, if I don't want it, I will not get it. So you don't know the true life, which is generous. If you want something from God, does God say, OK, I give you this, and you give me this? Can God want something from you? Many people are doing this. Many evangelists are doing this. You know, God will help you if you promise to be this. What does God want from you? <laughs> what you can have that God, oh, listen, you know, let's make a deal. I help you, you help me. 
Why can God want anything from you? That's the great thing about God. He wants nothing from you. He give you everything. You want something from mind. He wants something from you. <laughs> Join the clan. He wants something from you. Hmm? Just say yes. Okay? Give us the power to move in. Okay? And we'll give you fame, we'll give you riches, we'll give you women or men or whatever you want. We can give to you these things because we have that power. Hmm? You may say, no, I don't want the riches, I don't want that, I just want. A nice girlfriend. Same deal. Why not just want you to be free? Let God give you the girlfriend. You want to choose for yourself. Maybe I shouldn't be talking like this. Maybe I should not be talking like this. Okay. I'm just pointing out. When you have a strong desire, I want this, I want this, I want this. And in this world as it is, everyone thinks this is just, that's how life is. You have to want. That's the nature of the person. They're always wanting, which means that you always have the sense you are lacking something. I want, I want, I need, I want, I want. You see? So, in a sense, you, you never feel your already completeness. And you may say, Look, you want, you want a Lamborghini? You want a Lamborghini? Yeah, that's what I want more than anything in the world. What about if I give you all the peace in the world? No, 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 I want peace. I want a Lamborghini. I want a Lamborghini. What about I give you all the joy and the love in the world? No, I want a Lamborghini. I want a Lamborghini. But what can a Lamborghini give you? Oh, prestige. Wow, I want to go down the road like this. Yeah. Yeah. I want people to see me, you know? Yeah, I want to rev up. <laughs> and all the girls go, wow. I want that. Oh, you don't want peace? No, 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 I want Lamborghini. <laughs> Let's face it. Sometimes that's what you want. Peace? No, you don't want for Lamborghini? No, I don't want peace. I want excitement right now. You are entitled to want that. You are entitled to want that. I see what you speak is true. Yes. No one knows the joy and the bliss of the one who wants nothing. Nobody knows the joy, the completeness, the bliss, the love, the foreverness, the fearlessness of the one who wants nothing. Huh? The one who wants nothing is complete. He's emperor. He's king of the world. The one who wants, wants, wants is a slave of the world. My words were good 3,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, 7,000 years ago, 100 years ago, and today. It is the same. It's the same truth. I, <clears throat> I still feel a tension. Is it because I'm still reproducing that? How can I be free of that? How can I be love beyond wanting? Well, it has a little bit to do with a kind of a culture of mistrust. We mistrust life. There's a feeling that Unless you are pushing for the things you want, you are missing out and you will not get it. You are already one or two steps out from your center. You see, you have cultivated or it's been cultivated through our culture a certain thing that you need, you want this thing, you have, and it, it's, it's, it's like it's, it's moved really deeply, it feels deep inside that unless I get this, I will never be happy. And guess what? turns out to be true. You've made it into a truth. Unless I get this, I'll never be happy. 
you have made that into an affirmation. You have told yourself that. And so it's very difficult to let go of it. And so there is an impatience with life that, you know, if I don't go for the thing I want now, I'll lose my chance. So in that type of inner emotional climate, you're not willing to see what life offers. You don't trust it. And you'll always look at this, it's not quite what I want. You see. Why it will not be what you want? Because you have moved away from your natural joy. You have become an addict. You have become an addict. An addict will never be satisfied with what he gets. Do you follow? An addict will never eat all one, one more. One more. You see? I have looked at, if I put it extreme way, people who are addicted to certain kind of drugs and their bodies are rotting okay and they can't stop their bodies are rotting and they cannot stop that is not a joy that is not happiness When you are resting in the centre of your being, you are without need. You are without addiction. Your life is balanced. It is naturally happy. You are happy. You don't need to be happy about something. You are just happy. You don't need a theme. You don't need an object. You don't need a dream. You are just happy. Happiness is a part of what you are. Joy and peace, stillness, love. You can't help it. You start to love your enemies. You think, oh my God, I'm loving my enemies now. You see? <laughs> and you'll see that it's not, not personally, not loving them personally. You know, saying, smash my face, I love you. You're not going to say like this. <laughs> but it means that your love is so broad. It encompasses even people who may do things that are not pleasant to you. That is a, a gradual refinement, you see. So this feeling, you speak about it. Uh, I don't know how to, how to change that. How to change this, you see. But. If you are listening, already the seeds are being sown in your mind, and that change will begin to happen much more grace, gracefully. You are recognizing. You only have to recognize the truth from the untruth, and say yes to the truth. And already the seeds are growing. I feel all you say is true. I feel a silence, but I kind of feel my heart is still closed in that, like I want to open up and... Um... Your mind wants you to believe your heart is closed. Your mind wants to believe you, you believe your heart is closed. There's no such thing. The heart, your true heart cannot be closed. It's not a door. <laughs> it's life itself. Your heart can't be closed. <laughs> Maybe your psychological, the kind of psychological heart, whatever that is, feels like something. <laughs> yeah? It is not that your real heart is life itself. It is the source itself. It cannot be closed. That is just a thought. A thought believed in becomes real for you as experience. It is not true. You're going to have to throw all this stuff away. Put them in the toilet. Let's throw all their rubbish thoughts. We have a lot of rubbish thoughts. Too many. If you had to count them all, you'd be sitting down days and 750,000, 750,000, and 20. Yeah, rubbish, rubbish. Throw them away. 
even if I say to you, anybody, you know, just for a moment while we are here, leave all your ideas for a moment. We can do this. In fact, it's not, it's not difficult. You're doing it all the time in different ways. Leave all those thoughts aside. Any idea you have about who you are and what you want from life, and just, just put them all down for a moment. You're carrying these bags around everywhere, even on the beach. You go for a swim, you got your bags, you know, you can't put them down. No, put them down for a minute, leave everything, take everything off, take every, all your concepts away, everything off, leave them to the side for a moment. As many things as you can take out, just take, take them out. Whatever you see or imagine or remember, whatever, just put everything down. Everything down. Leave them right here. When we finish, you can add them back if you want. But leave them for one moment, be totally empty. Go all the way right from your 100, 99, 98, and go right down. Five, four, three, two, one. Finish, Moji. Okay? And you will stay as zero. You're not even one. When you start counting, what you start? One, two, three, four. You don't start zero. Okay? You'll be zero. Okay? Nothing at all. You do it now. I want to show you something. Don't just imagine if anybody wants, I want to. You will demonstrate for yourself something beautiful now. It doesn't matter if the thoughts are going, hey, hey I'm not going anywhere. I'm right here. It doesn't matter. You're not engaged with them. Leave everything, everything alone. Be empty beyond even the concept of emptiness. And don't need any imagination for what I'm going to show you. Just in your own natural, sober mind. Leave everything, even the desire for freedom, enlightenment, and don't touch anything now, not even the sense of I, the I, me. Leave also put him down. down everything. And don't pick up anything new. And don't be waiting for something. <coughs> And don't go to sleep. Where are you now? What is your state? I'm emptiness. <coughs> There's some warmth. Some? Warmth. Warmth. Warm. Like warm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now let's say. I don't know what each of you are experiencing, but pretty much it would be something of the sort of a kind of silence and peace, generally. Don't grab onto even this, even if it feels beautiful. Just let it be there. It's free. Don't try to capture it. It's free. So you're not going to be collecting. You simply notice. No, it's just emptiness, silence, peace. Don't tie yourself to even these. Don't combine yourself with anything at all. Just let it be there. Just like a fragrance. You pass a flower. Wow, beautiful smell of lavender. Yes, don't collect the smell. Just enjoy. (coughs) 
So if you don't try to collect even what is beautiful, then you won't collect what is ugly. Pay attention to the sense of yourself, but don't put any pictures to it, because no picture belongs here now. Can you experience yourself without pictures, without self-image? Hmm? Can you experience? Can you know yourself without self-image? You just know that you are, isn't it? You feel there's perhaps a subtle quality of presence, maybe. The natural way in which you know you exist. But there's no information there. There's no personal story. There's no autobiography. There's no resume. Just the sense you exist. Do you have any problems here? From any region of time, from past or future or present, do you have any problem? Does this feel to be a totally Unrealistic way to be? Illegitimate? Is there any law in life that says thou should not be like this? But your mind is going to come. And he has a few opinions to say about this. You can't live like this. When people ask you what you're doing, what are you going to say? Nothing. Where's your future? Huh? What about your future? Huh? Your friends all have a future. <laughs> what about you? You drop out. Can you bear the voice from your mind? He will tell you, you're, you're so boring now. Where are your friends? It will seem as though it knows the right buttons to press. He's trying this one, try this one, try this one, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> ouch, ouch. Ah, yes, this one. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Who's going to want to marry you? Uh -huh. Have you ever heard of a, a married Buddha? <laughs> what is it that's going to catch your attention? In fact, if you are smart, you will use that to see genuinely, is there anything here that has an investment huh, in illusions? Because if it is hurting, ah, what's that hurting? Either the mind is going to say, ha ha, gotcha. Or you're going to say, you know what, mind, thank you for showing this. There were some false, some delusions about this. Thanks for helping me to reveal it. Now I've got it. <laughs> no, thank you, mind. Or are you going to be going, ouch, 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 ouch. No, mind, mind. OK, OK, let's seal the deal. What are you going to do? There may be one or two people 
for whom even such things they can say it's nothing at all it's nothing at all it's nothing at all Mine is coming in the moment. Oh, happy Diwali. <laughs> happy Diwali. <laughs> yeah, good. Oh, let's go celebrate. But it's nothing at all. Not for this. Maybe you'll be known as the most, the most boring person. You're not interested in anything at all, this guy. There's no use. There's no use going to his house. Mm, no fun. He's happy to be empty. <laughs> One last thing. The tendency we're talking about, I also now see life or God gives me something and then my mind is like, oh, this cannot be the right thing. Need something out. So is that the same one, the same voice? It's the same guy. <laughs> All over the world, speaking inside each body. <laughs> Men, women, children, old people. It's the same guy. Yeah. Thank you. Good. <laughs> 